Welcome to the Liz McMullen Show. I have a very kick-ass panel of empath and empath character writers. And everybody's been on the show before, and I'm so psyched to have everybody back. And we have Lindy K. Silva. Welcome to the show. You can call her Storm. <laughs> and we and we have Jody who's up at the crack of dawn to be with us. Hello. Hello. I, I can't do a cool thing like Linda, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody can be Storm but Storm. Yeah. We have uh Yvonne Height, who is my ADD sister, and we have squirrel <laughs> issues. <laughs> oh, oh, wow, Yvonne, you got you got the shitty. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Yvonne. I really do. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Hey. And then we have a dual personality. Um, <laughs> we have Sheila, who is Lorraine, the happy lesbian housewife. Yay. Yay. I have multiple personalities. <laughs> that, yeah. Kind of like a psych- psychopathic panel, not a, not a psychic one. Oh, no, we're not psychopaths, at least not until a few drinks. Psychology, that was the word. Uh. (laughs) (laughs) So, Linda, why don't you start us off? You have written this kick-out series on Echo as your main character, who's an empath. Can you talk a little bit about the series? Yeah, um, it's sometimes a little intimidating to be on these panels with um, so many people who are empaths, because I am not. Um, I don't pretend to be, I don't uh, have uh, any connection in terms of being able to, to, to do what uh, Lorraine and Yvonne and you are, uh, are capable of doing. Um, I just knew that I wanted a character in Echo who had special abilities that could actually be real in the world. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, because I grew up reading comic books, I have a full sleeve of Storm from the X-Men uh, tattooed and but I but I really wanted I wanted her to have like superhero type powers that could actually exist and until I started actually doing the research about it I was um, uh, I'm not necessarily a believer but I I just didn't know that I could create a character that was that believable and um, it was Yvonne who and a couple others who said wow you you nailed her. And, and, and as well as some of the other characters. So Echo is just is because I don't want to go on about just mm-hmm. the, the series, but I, in terms of empathic abilities, um, I tried to create characters that I think could actually exist based on the, the powers that they, you mm-hmm. know, the paranormal powers that they have. I was I really think- shocked that you were not an empath. Um, Me too. Because I, there I, are I things, like there are things that you have in there that I, you know, <sighs> I know it's hard for people to grasp the idea of like realism when it comes to um, psychic abilities because some people don't believe in them and whatnot. Um, but I find that my personal experiences as an empath um, came through in my writing, so I was so surprised to hear that you weren't. Yeah, I, I, it really was the whole superhero thing, and I don't. And I actually was talking with um, Lorraine earlier about. Uh, that there are a lot of people that believe that they have empathic skills. Um, mm-hmm. She's the real deal. <laughs> I got to tell you, <laughs> I, I, I wish I would have known uh, both of on and, and Lorraine uh, before I wrote, because then I could have had a, a lot more research and, and from, you know, from people that uh, had experience uh, with uh, the supernatural and the paranormal. But um, I'm, I'm pleased. I, I was very pleased to hear that I was spot on because it's, I think that's something that every writer needs to really work hard on is to, to hit that. You have to hit it on the, on the bullseye or you need to step away. Yeah. Um, Sheila is kind of super califragilistic expialidocious when it comes to her abilities. She's, she's more than an empath. Sheila, can you talk about like some of, some of the things in your life? Um, yeah, I will say that, um, I, first I have to, I have to touch on Linda Kay just, um, just for a second, and and I have to say that when I first read the Echo books, um, I literally cried. Don't get a big head, Linda Kay. Okay. And <laughs> because for the first time, I actually thought, oh my God, she gets it. Somebody gets it. 
I'm not crazy. Hallelujah. Because <laughs> <laughs> it was so real to me. For the first time, I truly felt like I wasn't out there alone. Because mm-hmm. not a lot of people truly get what an empath is to the extent that Linda K. wrote Echo. Mm-hmm. I mean, people understand, oh, you feel what other people feel, or oh, you have a headache when somebody else has an echo, a, head, a headache. But it's so much more than that. Um, and so I have to say bravo to Linda K. for that series because literally it, it touched me in a place I haven't been touched before. Um, but I will say that I, I tell everyone it is my strongest gift as well as my worst curse because that I can't take off and put down. Um, my other psychic gifts, I'm clairvoyant, clairaudient, I can see, feel, hear, taste, touch. Um, and and this, that's what I do day to day for a living because we all know we don't make a whole lot writing lesbian malls and uh, Hey, girl, I'm going to stop you for a second. I'm getting, like, this weird metallic sound. Um, let's... That's because she was on the line. Uh. <laughs> I'm on the line. <laughs> do you do... Andy, it does it to me, too. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. What I'm going to... Hold on a second. I'm just going to pause the recording for a second. Um, we're recording again. Just a, a little thing to our fellow listeners out there. If you hear a little buzz, um, apparently Sheila has an effect on electronics. Um, yeah, that's all right yes. yes. Uh, <laughs> I will kill your cell phones and your credit cards and anything. <laughs> <laughs> Can you kill credit card bills? Yeah, they melt computers too. Yes. Um, so anyway, those... Those gifts of mine, I can basically, for the most part, take off and set aside. Um, cause I do actually talk to dead people and those kind of things. But the empathic part of me, I cannot set aside. That is with me all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, I got it. it truly hurts sometimes. I actually flatlined three times when my daughter was ill because I was taking illness for, from her. They had to shock me back three times on the way to the hospital. Oh, oh honey. So that's something that you you can't take off the empathic part of you. Mm-mm. You can learn to shield. You can learn to hope. You can learn to do all those nice little things I can do. But I've never, and, and I'm sure some people can, I've never truly been able to take off um, my empathic side. I just had a friend commit suicide a couple of weeks ago, and he was a very strong empath. Um, the numbers are high in empaths. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's something you have to really um, stay on top of. So, you know, one so of the. What is it you do? Because I know that Eck talks about um, building psychic shields. What is it? And this is for those of you that have that ability. What do you do to, to keep. Your sanity. Okay. Um, when I was little, and I was I was very lucky to um, learn, much as Echo learned from her mentor, I had my aunts who taught me, um, and they taught me. I, I was a um, age where I was reading and voraciously, and and they were training me, and they said, "What is the strongest thing that you know of?" And I was reading Charlotte's Web, and and of course I said spider webs and they said okay what I want you to do is envision yourself wrapping yourself very tightly in a spider's web and once you get yourself wrapped from the top of your head all the way under your feet it cannot things cannot come through they cannot bombard you and so to this day I wrap myself in spider web oh. um, because that yeah that was the the strongest thing I knew then, and it it has stayed with me to this day. So there will be times where you see me sitting there, and I look like I'm kind of with the conversation, but kind of not. I've drifted off this. Generally, I'm rapping. So that's how I protect. I do the whole white light of the Holy Spirit and 
surround myself with a ball of energy and that too, but the spider web comes first. Mm -hmm. Yvonne, you said you wanted to kind of weigh in on some of the things that Sheila was saying. Well, that, well, first I want to thank you for inviting me to the conversation. Um, I wanted to, to tie some threads here for, for people that are listening. Um, I had met Sheila or hired her several years ago and, um, she had told me about Linda Kay's books on echo and, you know, you have to read this. And I read the echo and, and your description of, uh, what an empath was. And, you know, Sheila and I talked at great length about that and decided that you had to be one because you described it so well to where it, it made, um, it's almost as if it makes your skin fit for somebody that's looking outward with the gift. And I remember I wrote you that fangirl letter. <laughs> so I had no problem squealing it, you know, fangirl, fangirl, you know, but it was Sheila that turned me on to your books. And um, this is before that. any of mine had been published. But, you know, it was when I had talked to Sheila that, you know, I actually got confirmation. You know, for me, I didn't have anybody, you know, telling me about my gifts or that they were gifts. Or, you know, I had an inkling. It wasn't until I was in my late 40s and Sheila confirmed it for me that I actually had a label for it. You know, I never knew how to deal with it. I just knew that, that – um, I felt what everybody else was feeling. I mean, you know, people could be having a fight and they're done and over and I'm sitting in the middle of the room crying and I can't tell you why, you know, because they're done and over, but I'm still feeling, I'm holding, I'm sitting there covered in their feelings and, uh, my, you know, and I'm going to be truly honest, but the way I coped was drugs. You know, I, I, I had no other coping mechanism growing up. I wow. think um, one of the reasons why I have a hard time uh, with, uh, with intense, intense confrontations, confrontations is because the emotions get to me, um, and I have a hard time dealing with the intensity of an argument where everybody is, like, very fiery, and so I have a hard time with that, and... The other thing is, like, I don't know, it's probably true for you guys, but if I'm very tired or worn thin, then I feel everything around me, and it is so rattling. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so, Linda, kudos to you. I had no idea you weren't an empath, and I am so freaking impressed by that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That you got it so well. You know, I and know, that, I and that my little fangirl letter touched you. That was cool. I'm not seeing you way before I met you. So, I know, isn't it funny? I mean, I think it's just it's so awesome that we became friends. And yeah, that through, yeah. Through all of that, and that goes it's that like speaks to all of <laughs> I love that for <laughs> Absolutely. So, yeah. Jody, I know oh. you're all the way over there on the other side of the pond. And, <laughs> and you have a very unique empath. I've never, like you describe her physically as like a Samson, as being, you know, very muscular and tall and imposing. And what I thought was interesting is a lot of times when I, I read an empath, they, they don't have that more a naturally aggressive side to her. And she seemed to have a lot more going on other than just being an empath. Yeah, I mean... What what happened from Aaron was that um, I basically took some things that I know about myself and some things that I know about other people, and the name was uh, because I was going to be called Aaron um, until I was born, um, and then obviously they realised I was a girl, just about, and uh, changed my name. Um, so Aaron is uh, uh, means sort of tower of strength, basically. Um, as a name meaning so I kind of wanted to change it and in sort of a celtic -y type way Aaron the female version is Aaron so that's how it came so her characteristic sort of came from the name um, and I was kind of challenged to to write a book which took in uh, my experiences experiences of people I knew and events that had happened um, sort of where I live. Um, so what I did is I sort of started writing it um, and her voice just sort of came out um, and sort of brought in with it different talents because, she, yeah, she's not... Um, 
Well, I mean, she she has the emotional thing, but she also has this ability to read auras and see, like she, it starts out in a mental hospital. um, And I don't know how the fuck she coped because in the Echo series, Echo was in a psych ward and she would have gone bonkers like if she wasn't spotted and then um, rescued. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, and um, that's kind of what I wanted to show was that um, when people who are empathic um, are in a um, a place where there's a lot of people, a lot of emotions, especially with people who may have like um, distress of some sort, that especially when they're tired or ill, um, get affected to a point where it almost makes them um, feel crazy. So, um, kind of Aaron's when you meet her is at the point where she's got to the point where she's now numb of, um, with it all because she's just overwhelmed by by the entire process of it. And the sort of shut down in a sense, um, because she doesn't have anyone that has told her how to shield herself, Mm -hmm. um, and doesn't know it kind of denies her, her gifts in a sense. Um, and I wanted to, sort of show that because that's what the series is about is about her she's been burdened she thinks they're burdens you know she doesn't want to be an empath in any way shape or form the last thing she wants is to feel anything um and so what she does is she t- the series is about how we take what we've been given and we start using it to help other people by sort of acknowledging who we are in a sense mm-hmm. Sheila, when you you do some work with people, you you um you help people. Does that help you? Kind of. Um, does it feel good? Does it like help you feel like you're you're doing something positive with your gift? It does. Um, to a point, it does because. Unfortunately, along with the good comes the tough, Mm -hmm. I guess is the way to put it, because I don't always, the one thing I am is honest, right, okay? Absolutely. (laughs) And generally, I will ask if you want me to tell you the truth, and I don't always get what people want. But I will give them what I get. And unfortunately, they may not hear what they want to hear. Mm-hmm. Because it's hard sometimes. Um, and, and they may not realize that that's what, exactly what they need to know at the time. Mm-hmm. But I like to think that in the end, it's exactly what they'll need to know down the road. So, yeah, it makes me feel good to know that I've helped them, especially if a, if someone on the other side comes through and they recognize who they are and, you know, they're thankful to get one last chance to, you know, make that con- connection. Mm-hmm. And But, yeah, it's, it's hard, too, when I have to give them news that they, you know, they're not looking for. I don't predict death. I never will because that can be changed Mm -hmm. Um, simply by taking a different path. Um, But still, yeah, it's hard to give someone news they don't want to hear. That hurts. Um, Sometimes people will, when they're with you, may not be able to, to take it in. And see it for right. what it is. And, it's, you know, the the joke in the house is, like, I have to say no before I say yes because I'm a control freak. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll disagree with you le- right, left, and center, and then I'll go, like, you know what? You were right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty much how I do my job. Um, but, yeah, I do like to think that, that I do give hope. Um I do have people come in and tell me saying, well, is my grandma going to die? And when I won't tell them, you know, I, they're like, but that's what I wanted to know. And I'm, and I'm like, well, here's your money back. Cause I'm not going to 
tell you that, you know, I'll say eventually all people die. Uh, because I, I don't think it's fair to put a number on grandma's going to die in three weeks. Um, and sometimes people just want that. Some people, they just want to know, when am I going to find a man? And it's going <laughs> to literally what? the least favorite question ever. <laughs> <laughs> I just seriously want to jump off the bridge when I hear that. Um, or when am I going to find a woman? When am I going to find a partner? When am I going to find somebody? And it's it's not why you're sitting in your pajamas on the couch. I promise you, there. It's not the UPS man. Not going to knock on the door. <laughs> um, I have to. I have to enter. To make it happen. Go ahead, Yvonne. I have to interject, I, you know, and it, it must be really hard. Like when Sheila and I are talking on the phone, we're both reading each other. And uh, I'll, and I'll verify on that because, you know, I've asked her several times to do past life on me and she won't do it. There's you know, reasons. You know, but she has good. Yeah, I know they are. And I know it's because she has, you know, love for me, you know, and doesn't want to hurt me. You know, so every once in a while I try and sneak in a couple of questions. <laughs> You know, if it comes to me and I'll say, okay, I know it was here, you know, and I was doing this, you know, but I mean, I'll verify that, you know, and that's got to be hard, you know, because there are things that will come up when I'm talking to her that, that I don't want to say because I don't want to hurt her feelings, but it, or, you know, bring up a red flag or whatever. So, but, you know, having a conversation with two psychics is always fascinating. <laughs> I yes. mean, you never know what's coming up. You know, things are popping all over the place, you know, and that's if we can finish our conversation because the phones die or we start echoing or the the ringing goes on and, you know, the phone will work perfect all day till I talk to her. <laughs> you know? So it's great fun, though. It's great fun. Yeah. So, Yvonne, I want to pull in uh, your, is it Sisters of Spirit? Am I <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, Sisters of Spirits. <laughs> oh, my now, goodness. The, the dead name doesn't actually come out until the February. Okay. Oh, February. <laughs> <laughs> the February. The dead name comes out in February, so. That is an intense title. Um, so you have, Sonny's the empath. Yes. And, you know, I, when I was reading Sonny, I could, I could totally relate to the feeling, am I having this feeling or are they having this feeling? What's going yeah. on? And, like, I have, I have, you know, I guess I don't have extensive psychic ability like the two of you do. But I have a, a really strong connection to one of my friends. And there are times when I'm like, why am I angry? There's no reason to be angry. Or why am I sad? Or what's going on? I was like, honey, are you okay? She's like, oh, I just had a bad argument at work. I was like, I knew it. You know, like I, and, and, and one of the tricks that when you have empathic ability is trying to tease apart, is this what I'm experiencing? Is this what I'm feeling? Is this what somebody else is feeling? And in my book, um, If I Die Before I Wake, you know, there, there's that same connection. It was kind of fun to write a book with witches in it because then I could kind of explore all the different experiences that I've had. And the reason why Faith could read Charlie so well wasn't so much that she was an empath, but it was that they had a very intense connection. And for that reason, like she had very vivid, almost to the one point where they're like trying to make sure if she actually took on some injuries that, you know, Charlie had had. So like, how, how do you feel, this is like for Yvonne particularly, how does it feel when you write empath, when you write those abilities in a book? Um, well, first I want to say that if, you know, as far as psychics go, I'm in kindergarten and she was a college graduate. So I want to make that perfectly clear. Um, when I write empath, when I'm writing, I actually pull these feelings out, you know? Um, so when I write empath, I'm feeling what my characters are feeling, you know, and that can be either a really good thing or it can be a really bad thing. It depends, mm -hmm. you know, and when I was writing shade, it was really hard because I had to go to that dark place, pull those feelings out and re-experience them. It's like having PTSD while you're writing, you know? And, you know, it's all personal experience. It's just written from a different character. Now, if I had my choice, I would totally be Sunny. She's so well adjusted. You know, I, I, who wouldn't want to be Sunny, right? She's brought up in love and a very accepting yeah. family. And she is literally Sunny. Mm -hmm. um, but I, you know, I find Shade infinitely more fascinating. And your book's coming out in February, so I won't spill the beans. But... Uh -huh. 
I really loved that you wrote Shade's story. I needed Shade's story because there's n the only person that can put words to what makes her her is Shade herself. And so one of the things I loved the most about the book was the in internal dialogue and the backstory and all the things that you can't see, you know, in the surface of the sexy badass you know, necromancer. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she she probably cost me ten years of my life writing her. <sighs> yeah, that was intense. It was intense. Mm -hmm. Sheila, have you thought about um, writing fiction? I have. <laughs> okay. So there. <laughs> Actually, I'm working on a young adult book as well right now, um, and it's not paranormal. But I would like to do a young adult paranormal mm -hmm. as well as a, a, an adult paranormal. What yeah, attracts you about, about young I adult? It would be fabulous. Mm -hmm. um, I've also thought about doing a, a true story paranormal. Oh, cool. Um, I would love some, to read it. Huh? I would love to read that. Oh, yeah, I'd be all over that. <laughs> things that I came upon in my years and years of um, um, doing this. Um, probably one of the most fascinating, I was resting one day um, between readings. It was lunch, and I just sat down on the couch and flopped my head back, and all of a sudden I heard, go get her. She's going to do it. Go get her. you got to call her now. And I knew I didn't have any readings for another hour or so, and I'm like, go away. You know, just go away and it, this man kept saying you've got to go get her now you've got to go get her now and he's just stomping his little feet and I'm like just go away but then I saw I, I didn't see I felt overwhelming just fear and I ran up to see who my next client was and he said that's her call her now she's going to do it she's going to do it she's counting the pills and I went ahead and called that lady and sure enough, she had been about to swallow the pills when I called. Oh, oh my goodness. So she was going to commit suicide that day. Mm. So, yeah. Um, I, I was wondering if we even really explained what an empath is or does. Did oh. we do that? Well, why don't you do that for us, Because since you're the all-star? Uh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm not kissing your ass. It's you honest to goodness. Down. <laughs> I read. You, I read your bio on on your on your Sheila Powell site. I was like, she has. Oh my god! I don't even quite quantify exactly what all of her abilities mean, but she sounds studly. I am fabulous. <laughs> well, an empath is basically someone who is um, who has the ability to feel what another person animal or spirit is feeling um, or to actually put themselves into the shoes of another person to feel their pain, suffering, depression, Ill depression illness, etc. Um, and actually live that person's life. Um, and, and I don't think people Yet when we say that we can do that, I don't think they understand that we actually feel the fear. We actually feel the anger. We get angry. Mm -hmm. We it's get like plugged into another person. Absolutely. Like, yeah. We totally feel that anger. We get angry. We get, and we don't know why we walk into Walmart person. Completely and personally, <laughs> totally happy, and then we, we turn into, we go from zero to bitch in 2.3. Okay, wait a minute, that's wait a minute. That, that's not being an empath. That's, not that's just Walmart. Walmart. That's, that's somebody going into Walmart. <laughs> okay, <laughs> going to Macy's and, and turning into that. How about that? Yeah. Well, I, it's totally against my will, though. I mean, it's not anything I chose to have or, no. or want to do. You know, I that's just me sitting when everybody else's feelings, you know. Exactly. And, and it's, and you know, it's, it's spot on. Um, 
that it's not a choice. And the other thing is like, I, I try to be somewhat guarded, um, unless I, I have a sense for a person or I think I have a sense for a person. Right. And, um, then I can understand like how open I should be. Cause you know, you have to kind of be a hard ass to a certain degree so that you're not assaulted by all these different emotions. And I, I learned how to do that. I, I don't do it all the time. I'm a failure most of the time. Um, but I was, I was at the GCLS conference this summer with all you wonderful ladies. And, um, I, I knew this person. I knew this person fairly well. I had hugged this person before. So I felt safe with this person, right? And I hugged her. And then I was like awash with mania. I was like, that oh was... God, that was you, wasn't it? <laughs> no, it wasn't you, honey. It wasn't you. No, but it was this... It was like, you know, I hugged her. And I, I was just like, my entire body filled with this crazy energy. And I was just like, that was a really bad idea, Liz. But, like, you can never know. Like, I, I try to be cautious who I open my spirit to. Because, like, you, you know, even a nor- normal everyday person, you know, you can get your feelings hurt. You can have somebody mistreat you um, or take advantage of you. Or you don't know but somebody's nature until, like, I, this is something in high school. It's like, you don't know somebody's nature until they have the opportunity to betray you and they don't. And that could be in months. It could be in years. But, like, sometimes when I think I know someone's spirit, you know, I'm like, oh, I'm safe, I'm safe, this is fine. And then I'm like, oh, that was a really bad idea to be that wide open to that person. Yes. So, yeah. Joe, are you okay over there across the pond? What are some, I know you're listening, but you have a, a purdy voice. So what are some of your well, thoughts? Um, well, kind of, I... Like, I was thinking about, you know, you said about how cautious and guarded you have to be and how sometimes that's kind of why on, like, the front cover is the hands because um, touch, to me, I think, is quite an important thing. And um, in family and people that I know that um, touch can sort of... Uh, I think my uncle used to call it, like, a psychic shock. I'm not sure whether... Um, Sheila, Lorraine, Sheila, um, not very good with names, um, is both of you, um, (laughs) (laughs) um, it is that, uh, sort of you get a sense or or a picture of something that you, uh, shouldn't necessarily, well, whether, whether you should or shouldn't, but you get a picture kind of of something or a feeling or something along those lines. So I kind of, for the book, um, Aaron chose to wear gloves um, to try and stop the skin-to-skin contact. Obviously, it, would, it didn't stop the um, the emotional sense that she got of people. And also that I kind of wanted to get in there that sometimes uh, through media or, um, you know, even kind of like music and things, that people who sort of put their heart and soul into a project or a creative thing sometimes that can be quite overwhelming. Um, so I kind of sort of thought about, for instance, if a TV program is very loud or the internet is full of people's emotions, their thoughts, their fears, um, that for an empath might be uh, sort of a kind of, you know, overstimulating. I mean, it's probably quite overstimulating for most people, but, you know, when someone pours out their heart into a song, for instance, uh I, that's why I had kind of had Aaron then put her heart and soul into a violin to be creative, to sort of try and put her her loneliness of because she felt too much of everything into into music. Um, and uh, as a musician, that's sort of how I how I addressed the world before I became an author. And it was you know Moonlight Sonata for me was a song that made sense you know it kind of depicted somebody with a gift that um is sort of a a soul that it feels so much that is sort of disjointed from the world yet part of it yet feels too much about it um and it was how she built up that armor because i used the phrase from ephesians um the armor of god and how she kind of then used that depiction pictorially to build her own armor um and that's 
you know, when you meet some people, you get that sense, but some people are also quite shut off, I think, uh, you know, in any kind of, even body language terms. So for for the empaths, it's probably a lot worse. Um, but, you know, it's kind of trying to read whether someone is uh, not, not harmful, but whether or not they've got something, I suppose, that when she talks to them, they need help with, um, which she tries not to do, first of all. But the more she trusts herself, um, the more she kind of opens up to people, so then gets a more good response as opposed to the negative side of things she was feeling. Because to me, even in a scientific form, a positive energy breeds positive energy. So the more goodness you can put into the world, the more goodness you can get out of it. You know, it sort of builds... Um, and that's sort of how I want that she had to do that from inside first, but she had to shut herself off in order to do that. But it took love to um, to bring it out of her, to bring her out of her shell again. Mm. If that made sense. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. That was very articulate. Yeah. I, you know, I, I wonder, and, and this is something, you know, whether you have the, the empathic ability or not, uh, one of the I guess the traits that you have as an empath is that you can almost visually and physically feel the subtext of, of what somebody's saying. I, yeah. you know, right after, um, Superstorm Sandy, and I was actually here during the storm and the flood and whatnot. And then I went to go visit with some friends and there was a particular person that I was interacting with where her words, her outer self was saying one thing and then, but I knew inside that was so not in sync with what she was feeling. And so I had a hard time being around her because, you know, because I was worn thin from experience, not post-traumatic stress exactly, that, that came later. Um, but I, I could feel, I couldn't deal with the conflict of her thoughts and her act, the energy that she was putting out. And I've, and, and I, as I said, it gets worse when you're kind of tired or worn thin and you can't uh, deal with, I guess, the, it's not hypocrisy, but it's just like the, the difference between what somebody's actually thinking and feeling and what they're saying and doing. Yeah. Uh, well, I kind of tried to, I'm sorry, I'm buttoning. in. I didn't mean to, but, um, in, in the, that's what I kind of tried to say about, um, with, uh, you know, the, the sort of the feeling between um, uh, Aaron and one of the characters is that she is dupl dupl duplicitous, can't speak the word, um, and has this um, sort of way that she what she's saying isn't always what she's feeling. And, and I also kind of wanted to show the effect of someone who doesn't believe in anything and is quite sceptical. So... Um, how that can affect an empath or a person with any feeling, you know, because to be told uh, what, you know, sort of like that she wasn't believed was quite hard for her. So, and knowing that obviously that character didn't really mean what she said confused her. So, you know, I can imagine that in, in life that's probably really, <laughs> really, really hard to deal with. Linda, I have a question uh, for you. And do you find that you write Echo any differently now that you are acquainted with many empaths? That's a really good question. And yes, um, Lorraine stayed uh, at my house for a couple of days and I picked her brain and I, you know, she taught me about crystals and she gave me, what is that bowl that I use? The singing bell. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, those awesome. That's one of my favorite things ever. I do it all the time. And you know what's really funny is I show off with it. I go, look how loud I can make it. <laughs> and like, it's not a competition, you idiot. <laughs> it is. For us, for, for um, no, and I also feel uh, be because it's now it's for me, it's really real. And, and she has done a reading for me that I swear to God, just, you know, my hair you know, on the back of my neck stood up because she just was so spot on. And so, yeah. And I, and I'm going to throw this out there, um, because I, I've been struggling with, I, I'm wanting to write a young adult series and, um, 
I was struggling because Sheila said that I couldn't give up Echo and Sapphire was saying, we probably need to wrap this up. And that, that hurt my heart. And so I, I was on the bike and usually when I'm riding the, the Harley is when I get my, my juices going because I'm not thinking about anything. I'm actually having to concentrate on not dying, which is always kind of a, 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 an important thing on a motorcycle. <laughs> but it came to me that I had enough great younger characters that my young adult series is going to be Echo as a, as a young girl. Oh. It's, going be, it's going to be the prequel series to the, the adult Echo series. That is so I rad. It's a really important thing for kids to, to look at that feeling of being different and not knowing what to do with your emotions is hard enough. Not what do you do when you're your emotions and other people's emotions. So, um, and, and I think now that I have access to real empaths, I think that the layers that I'm going to be able to give to her will will far exceed what I've been able to do so far. So, yes, uh, to answer your question, it has. I think that it will really impact this this the prequel series. How- so, Sheila, you don't have to give Echo up, but now she's Yay. going to be a girl, and we get to see what you know what that's like. Um, oh, and I can help you with that because that's uh, turning. Going into your teens, hitting puberty, wow. Yeah. That is a time for an impact, well, for anybody with psychic gifts. Mm. That's a rough go. Yeah, well, it is. I, well, that, that kind of plays into the message will be really cool as well, is the it gets better message um, with mm. the with the Trevor project. I, I mentioned it in, in, in my book, so it'd be cool to see to see you do that. It'll be, I think it would help a lot of young people. Yeah. I would actually, um, Jody. I would like to have gotten that message when I was younger because yes. I hit a hard spot um, when, after my grandfather died and I didn't want to do it anymore. I, to hell with this, I quit. And you can't just quit. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. Um, but I tried and um, ended up probably hurting myself a lot worse than I helped myself. And I would love to have known that, that it got better. Yeah, I think that, you know, that's important for anyone who's different, you know, whether it's sexuality, whether it's um, empathic ability, you know, if, if, you've, if you're different in any sense, um, having somebody who's been there before turn around and say to you that, hey, look where I am now. Yeah. Um, yeah, because, I mean, people like Linda Kay and, uh, and and the authors that are in the GCLS, you know, they, they do a lot for their books. They don't realise sort of how they reach people. It's like with all you guys, you know, um, that your book falls into the hands of a teenager um, who doesn't know anyone like them empathically or, or, or any other reason. Um, and they meet a friend, you know, and that is the difference between them continuing on and going to school the next day or right. doing something daft, you know, that they may never come back from. So You know, and, and Jody, it's not just um, kids either. I think that no. we're, we're at that point where Christianity ha- is beginning to lose a toehold. I mean, I know that that's your your bailiwick, but here in the United States, it's losing its toehold because we're, we were we were a country that believed in miracles, but not magic. Uh, oh, we, you know, we, we believed in all of all of that stuff, and that was acceptable. And so we're we are slowly becoming a, a population that is beginning to to look at um, people that have these abilities as maybe this is something that's true and valid. And and there are so many, especially young girls, um, young women. Um, even older women, but we we have been suppressed and, and oppressed in keeping that. You know, we, we like to throw it out and call it women's intuition, and that's just that just minimizes it. Again, it, it, that that makes something that is an incredible skill and ability and talent and and makes you unique. Uh, but we we throw that blanket on it that that's what that is. And so I think that what we're seeing here is we're seeing a, uh, we're seeing a change. The new age religions are coming back. Um, and we're seeing people that are finally feeling like they can be heard, that they're not crazy. Because I think both Yvonne and Sheila can tell you, and probably Lizzie as well, there was that moment when you thought, I'm not going to make it. 
to the other oh, side. Oh, there was yeah, decades. Crazy. <laughs> decades. Uh. Yeah. You know, I yeah. think there are certain things that I, I won't enumerate, but I'll say that um, Yvonne, Sheila, and I have a lot in common <clears throat> um, in a lot of different ways. And um, the one thing that I'm kind of glad of and I was li- while I was listening to you talking is that I realized that I felt completely safe on Facebook and in other realms of of saying who I was, saying that I was an empath and that... Yes, my book um, is born of a lot of things that I've experienced or that I know. And it was cool to say that. Not cool as in the cool kids, but as in I felt safe to do so. And and I feel fortunate to be in a time where I can. You know, I, I, I think that that's a good thing. Yes. Well, yeah, and I I mean, from, from my point of view, because obviously I come from a, a Christianity point of view, um, is that uh, in sort of like the you know the the way I've been shown it because I I went to church late you know it was after certain events that kind of you know show me outside of church and thank God I did because where I come from a lot of stuff happened that um, a lot of people didn't kind of get through but I managed to luckily an offend up outside of church um, and the people in there kind of talked you through um, spirituality and, and women's intuition, you know, you say call it women's intuition, um, but like, and about gifts and about feeling things. And they kind of talked to you in a spiritual sense about, you know, that whether or not people believe in God or, or even good, you know, it, it doesn't matter whether there's a faith element, but human people, you know, and any of us kind of have this ability to maybe, you know, we, we, we are, you know, like creativity, you know, some people are creative, some people aren't. It's kind of how we're, we're built. And um, that when I was in the church, that was sort of shown as a good thing, you know, that it's sort of how you are. And, and I'm lucky that that happened to be the church I walked into. I know that in America, especially, Christianity isn't always uh, <laughs> a very positive uh, well, people in Christian church actually still full of people um, don't always present it in the best light. But it was only through reading about it and reading up on theology and talking to um, spiritual advisors and, and Jesuits, um, especially and Anglicans, that I kind of got a logical take on things, which helped with stuff that I was going through. And it's kind of the way I look at it, and it's a Jesuit theory, I guess, so I apologize for bringing in spirituality. Is no. Basically, there's a vehicle for getting to who you are meant to be um, and to the good place, whether or not you believe that is after you die, you know, whether you believe in heaven. Um, but basically, there's a, there's a path to goodness and light, um, and we all have different bridges. So whether or not our bridge means that we don't have a spiritual connection, but we are humanitarians, it doesn't matter. We're still all aiming for good because, you know, that that's how we want to be as people. You know, we all want good. We I don't think any one of us particularly wants to to cause havoc. We may do by accident, but, you know, we, we you know, if everyone had cake and enjoyed themselves, then the world would be a better place. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I got cake in there. Um, and, uh, <laughs> and when so, she says cake, it's pie, right? That's what you... It's pie you, for you guys, isn't it? Cake it's for cake me. for me. Um, one of the things that I want to draw in that actually connects to what you're saying <clears throat> is in um, The Empath, your book, uh, Aaron goes to a priest and is, you know, she's looking for rejection and, you know, for somebody to say that she's crazy and, and all that kind of stuff. And then... <clears throat> when she talks to the guy he he's he's not that and it's not what he thinks he's like well you know gifts can be scary um and 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 i thought that that was a really interesting twist and and a good turning point for her yeah i I, it was important because i went when i went to church i expected the same thing and it's whether it's rejection for who you are as a person or or whether it's for any particular gift um and I kind of felt it when I went into church that, yeah, they were going to turn around and say, you know, I turned up in biker gear. Um, 
and I expected these 80 year old dears to turn around and go please what are you doing in our church um and what I found was different you know it was from my experience that actually sometimes you judge people because of what you've been told by the media or the world um you know, kind of like people judge um, empaths and, you know, th- and, and everybody else, is that it's only when you talk to the individual person that you can actually be pleasantly surprised, you know, and, and that's kind of something I really wanted to get in there for Aaron was the message of it gets better, the message of you can get help from from the unlikeliest of sources, you know, and... and but, to be good overcoming fear, basically. Well, that, that's a good point. I just want to interject here. Um, before I had had my reading from Sheila, um, I didn't have a gift. I had a curse. Yeah. You know, I had never looked on it as a gift because I always, you know, I lived in very dark places. And, you know, by dark, I, you know, I don't mean, you know what I mean. Yes. But, uh, <coughs> you know... Until I actually got that validation from Sheila, I mean, that reading that I got, I think it it changed my life. It changed the direction of my life. And uh, she nudged you to write, correct? From that reading and then reading uh, Echo, you know, I I actually found, you know, my place in the world to where I was accepted and uh, for who I was, not who you wanted me to be, you know? being an empath for me has been mostly painful, you know, and, but I I do want to say something about the other side because I can also walk into a room and, you know, I can also feel someone's excitement. I cry when people win on game shows. I'm so excited for them. You know, (laughs) I can feel it through the TV, you know, so I really have to watch what I surround myself with because um, I've, I've never learned to turn it off. You know, and my my ability to understand God is limited by my ability to understand God. You know, that that's one of my favorite sayings. And, uh, you know, I'm an extremely spiritual person, but I, you know, I, I can't get into theology with, I mean, Ancient Aliens is my favorite show. Okay? I love that show. <laughs> you know, my, my, my idea of God changes all the time, you know, and, uh, I was raised Catholic and, you know, the church I was raised in, it, it, it was not acceptable, you know, to, to have any kind of, you know, so-called gifts or, you know, if you were different at all, you know, you were just supposed to stand up, kneel down and beat your chest. And I know that's, you know, not fair to the entire religion, but, you know, the church that I grew up in wasn't very nice, you know, and, and to always feel like that there was something wrong with me, you know, um, intrinsically, you know, wrong with me, you know, that I was born, you know, not on the outside looking in, but on the inside looking out, I was always confused. I had a hard time understanding why people didn't feel the way that I did about stuff. Yeah. And, you know, I had this feeling when I was younger, I was like, I feel like I was born with something born without something that everybody else has, there's got to be some reason why I feel so out of sync. And if I felt out of sync, I just felt like I, I feel too deeply. You know, I, I thought, you know, that I this world was just too hard for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, the, well, the, there's, there's that, say, um, that... Uh, Hello? Hello? Uh, I'm here. Okay, I can't hear Jody. We're here, Jody. We lost Jody. We lost Jody. Yeah. Um, in my house, Sweetie's favorite saying is, "Why are you crying?" <laughs> <laughs> she asks me that at least fifteen times a day, and it's because they're putting the dogs to sleep on TV, yeah. or <gasps> that lady just got a new ring, or it, it, some student. I read a book, and they said this. I cry, and Yvonne knows this, and Linda K. probably knows too, I cry at the drop of a hat. Me too. Me and too. Very much an empathic trait. Very much an empathic trait. Yeah, like, um, Ilya, my partner, has this, 
she's connected to me too. Um, and she can tell if I'm crying, not even looking at me. And especially if I'm watching something on TV and I'm getting all like, you know, mushy and melty and crying about it. She's like, are you crying? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I'm usually like, I need to get up out of bed sleep. Yeah. yeah. I usually just try to lie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not crying. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I have a question for Yvonne. Now that, like, the Sister of the Spirits, it was a trilogy, correct? Yes. What now? <laughs> I'm actually writing a romantic comedy now. Wow. <laughs> that's a departure for you baby it is but you know the character is totally ADD and charming so I can do that as well <laughs> <laughs> agreed well I think you're funny and you have a real sense um, like there's fun in your books even when there's you know darkness there's you know a little playful glint in the eye so to speak oh thank you I was like but do I have to say goodbye to them can't you be all like I am totally grieving shade right now. <laughs> yes, I am. Are you like can't you do like Star Wars? Let's do a prequel, <laughs> five quill, five four quill. <laughs> My wife just said no. <laughs> wow. She got to live with me through the whole writing. Yeah, yeah. So am bad. I correct in my remembrance that um Sheila was the one who nudged you to write, aside from your daughter? Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yep. Your daughter was was asking it of you. What made you um, pick up the pen? Oh, after Desiree died? Mm-hmm. Oh, it, it was just something that we were going to do. You know, Sandy and I were at a bookstore the other night, and um, Desiree showed up. And, you know, for people that don't know, she passed away several years ago. But she uh, – I had read a series, and it was yeah, a young was adult a young series, adult and I was – Wait. Um, J- Jody, are you back Jody, with us? I am. Sorry for some of my internet just decided that it, I blew my computer up. I'm following Lorraine and Yvonne now. Yes, <laughs> yes, it happens when you talk to us. Sorry. <laughs> so I just realized, wow, we have a major echo going on. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I don't that know. Just to... because I'm all the way in Wales as well, might be. <laughs> I caused Liz havoc the last time I talked to you. Oh Lord, yeah. Oh, it went away. I, you know, I think I'm just gonna chalk it down to you. You chicks are are sparking <laughs> some <laughs> electronic issues, and I realize that we're getting. You know, I I've almost forgotten to make time for some of the questions um, that we have, and it's a good way to kind of tie things in, even though I could go on forever. Um, so the first question is from Melissa Marilyn Moir Dunn wow she's got a lot of names going on Um, here's a question for Yvonne was there any one or anything that inspired you to create and develop Shade's character Um, I think like with all my characters they each have a part of me you know and I think that that writing a bad character is just fun you know I, I, th- but there, you know, the dark things that she goes through was very much autobiographical. So, how do you say that? Aut- Did I say that right? Autobiographical. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, she's she's a piece of me, and she's a piece of Sandy, and uh, yeah, she was really fun to write. I mean, draining, emotionally draining. But she, <laughs> Sandy's nodding. But um, she was fun to write. But yeah, she's a part of me. The person I would want to, you know. If I'd have been tough, <laughs> if I could have been badass like like Linda, that's right. That's exactly right. <laughs> if only we had been badass like Linda. <laughs> Excuse me, Storm. Hey, what can I say, man? It's true. I live up to my reputation. Have you seen my bike? <laughs> you, honey. I don't. I don't. I don't ride a pink scooter. <laughs> honk honk! Oh my gosh! And and the pink swords. <laughs> so Jody. Oh my gosh! Oh yeah, and my swords. And your Very swords. Cool. You're what? Be afraid of me too. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm afraid I of you. I didn't say I was afraid of you. I said, I'd like to be badass like you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that just made me think <laughs> about something that had a, happened at the conference. And you were like, no, you don't understand. This is Yvonne. You know, you don't know this, but you would all be my bitches if we were in jail. <laughs> I was like, wow. Yeah, probably. <laughs> oh my lord. So that was squirrel. Anyway, um Karen and I will I will murder her name as always, Cormelink. Uh, <laughs> um she had a question for Jody. Do you have personal experience with paranormal abilities that you would like to share? I like the latter part that you would like to share. I'd like to share yeah. <laughs> Because she knows I'm gonna, I'm gonna poke her in the eye. Um, no, uh, <laughs> I wouldn't do that. Go ahead, prevaricate. Um, <laughs> um is the, well, so, you know, I, a lot of the empath is uh, based on you, because you, obviously the it, it's she's an empath, but she's also other things, you know, like uh, Lorraine and Chief said. So she's not quite the definition that you know Storm um, uh, w- would say. Um, but you sort of like it is a mixture of people I know, um, things I've experienced, um, and things in my family that people have experienced. Um, some of them are amped up for um, for fictional purposes, you know, uh, things like just just to make it visual for people to understand that um, it's a thriller and not a um, and not a, a story about. Uh, um, sort of anything, you know, it's, it's, it's her dealing with certain types of things and to make things a little bit more scary. But things like the visions and things like that are uh, pretty much uh, sort of blow-by-blow accounts of um, things that I've, I've sort of known and, and people that I know have talked about. And, and the healing, apart from the fact that it's amped up for fictional purposes again but obviously faith healing is is something that goes on a lot um and and can help a lot of people so there you go I, kinda is kinda <laughs> <laughs> you know i i think for me i was lucky to grow up in um a family where where everybody has some sort of ability and you know it's something playful and joked about like i call my mom the conjurer because she can just wish for something and it happens. And my mom's not a talker. And a lot of times these wishes that she's pondering are atypical for things that she may like. And so I'll, I'll bring, I'll, Ilya went out for, to walk the dog and brought back, you know, coffee from Dunkin' Donuts and a flavor she doesn't drink. Oh, I was hoping for some coffee. <laughs> you know, she, she has this ability to make things happen. And I, I think because everybody had a little bit of something, that I felt more comfortable with myself having different that abilities. That's very cool. That's very cool. So I, I was, I was lucky in, in that sense that it was echo, 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 echo. Um, that that I had that kind of you know casual acceptance. It wasn't like um, it wasn't a big production, and I definitely don't think anything comes into like the same. Um, the same level as with um, Sheila, but it was it. You know, I I think that in some ways I was lucky as Sunny was in that. Um, I have I have a question to kind of pose um, to each of you. The echo is really freaking me out. Um, <laughs> Because you're about to talk to Lorraine, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it's all your fault. Um, I like this qu- question from Danny Dixon Bradshaw, and she said, what abilities in otherwise normal humans would uh, look for in order to classify themselves as empathic? Is that to uh, all of us? Or? Yeah, I think anybody who wants to address it. I thought that, did you say Sheila or Lorraine or? Um, she Lorraine. <laughs> Sheila the Rain. <laughs> Sheila Rain. Um, what was the question? The question is what abil- abilities in an otherwise normal humans oh, uh, <laughs> would we look for in order to classify themselves as empathic? Um, 
constantly feeling overwhelmed with emotion, uh, cry, crying a lot, feeling sad, angry, or depressed for no good reason. Um, you, finding that you can't be in public without becoming overwhelmed sometimes, I, which may lead you to living the life of a hermit. But then if you, yeah. live the life, if you live the life of a hermit, you may become depressed mm-hmm. because you watch the news, which makes you cry. Um, feeling sorry for other people, um, no matter who they are, or what they've done. Yeah. And feeling that you need to help, help them. Like homeless people on the road, you kind of feel like you have to give them a dollar. Um, yeah. being overweight is an empathic trait, by the way, um, because you absorb st- stressful emotions and that can trigger panic attacks and depression, as well as food, sex, and drug binges. Um, Addiction as well. Right. Chest pains, stomach pains, um, (laughs) things like that. Uh, Oh, this is a huge one. People, even strangers, open up and start volunteering their personal information. Oh, good Lord. I totally (laughs) know that one. It can be you're sitting on the bus or the waiting room in the hospital, and they volunteer their entire life story. <laughs> I was I, I was at a party once, and two different, I mean, it was, and I was young, like, we're, we're still in college, and we're at a party, and two di- different, two different women at two different points found me, sat down next to me, and told me, horrifying experiences that they had that was just so not in sync with anything. I was just sitting there minding my own business. And very much, oof. Um, very much the, the trait of an empath. Um, so basically those things are traits of an empath. Um, so if you find yourself constantly being given somebody else's story, constantly being overwhelmed, constantly crying a lot, you may want to look into, um, I, there's a great book called Empowered by Empathy um, by Rose Rosetree. Um, I still have that book that you, yeah. Yeah. Also, Whose Stuff Is This by Yvonne Perry um, that are great, great reads um, so that you can learn to protect yourself. Well, I I think that there's also, um, we're also looking at different levels of of, uh, disability. Um, I think there are plenty of people that uh, don't even know that they have anything like that. Um, uh, Lori, my my ex is, I always called her my social seeing eye dog because she has the ability to read right out of the gate. And she doesn't consider herself an empath. She just, she thinks that she's just street smart. And this isn't, again... Uh, the different terminology that we use to diminish something that, that is could definitely be sharper and, and more powerful if you, you know, knew more about it. But right. she'll be the first to go, that woman, you need to stop talking to that woman. She's, she doesn't like you. And I'm like, what? Because <laughs> I've got my head up my butt because I don't have that. And, and she's never wrong. So I think that there's, you know, Lizzie, there's also that there's just different levels of it. These two um, I think are, are well, well above, you know, they're like your gold star members, but I think that there's so many of, uh, so many people have, uh, our lower level empaths that can, can feel that and know that. And there's somebody like me who you'd have to take a baseball bat and hit me over the head before I realized, Oh, you, she doesn't like me. <laughs> <laughs> and then even then when someone hits you over the head, with that ball bat, you still don't get it sometimes. Right. <laughs> can I can I ask you a question C- to you to Yvonne and Lorraine and Liz? Is that do you find with your empathic ability that um, you have an affinity with animals or definitely? Yeah, yeah. Do you find oh, yeah. it too and things like that? I can hear them. You can hear them. Yeah. Do they do? Do you find that they, you know, strays and things will come to you and things like that? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And they're all animals. It's like snakes will come on our patio. Yep. Yep. 
we have the creepy critters everywhere, and my poor, poor, poor sweetie <laughs> does not like creepy critters, and they flock to me. Oh. Yeah. Aww. But, yes, they do. They come. We have robins here that follow us around, but that's about as good as oh, we yeah. get. Yeah. <laughs> we well, don't have creepy critters like you guys, thank God. Oh, no. We ha- Yes, the other night there was a mouse on the back porch. Just yeah. running around. Now, I don't do those creepy critters. Oh, I, I was thinking more like your spiders and snakes, but... <laughs> I, don't, I don't mind spiders and snakes. I actually can tell them to, to leave. There's yeah. been, sometimes they don't listen, but you know, more often than not, I'll tell them to back off. I don't want to have to kill you, and they'll go right out the door. <laughs> See, that is when it comes it, it really is strange it freaks sandy out it, it just freaks her out <laughs> oh my god i love you people <laughs> y'all are my kind of crazy <laughs> yeah <laughs> i actually wanted to argue with linda for a minute because i don't you know you say that you're not an empath and, you know, there's part of me that really wants to argue that with you. <laughs> She's really not. <laughs> <laughs> I love her dearly. And I can say that because, and I, 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 honestly, when I first read her books, I'm like, this chick is an empath. Or I know, you told me. an empath or whatever. And, she, no, she's really not, because I want to shake her. <laughs> and here in the back I think of I'm just such a, I was just such a fangirl. I just, I, I can't, I can't read anything from Linda because I'm just tripping over my feet when I see her. Oh. Yeah, well, you know what? And, and if there was any area of my world that I have anything like that, and you guys just brought it up, it's, it's with animals. Yeah. Um, and it's, oh, you know, my, my friends call me Dr. Doolittle because I, I, the, the craziest, I, I'll give you an example. We were at, in a pet store and a pot, pot belly pig got, got, got out and it got <laughs> wedged in between these two bird cages. And even the people at the pets are like, no, that, that, that pig bites and we're not getting it out. And I go, it's, it's a pig. <laughs> how, how, hard, how hard can it hurt if a pig bites you? And they're like, have you ever been bit by a pig? <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> so I got on my belly and I reached my hand in there and it, for a minute it was kind of like and I just started to pet it and the thing fell asleep so hard oh. I actually have this effect on women so I guess that's probably <laughs> going to get one <laughs> <laughs> ah, you can cut that part out <laughs> you're like I yeah. pet her and she falls asleep I know I know but the thing fell asleep so hard and actually grab it by its front little legs and pull it out and when I pull it out it was still sleeping when I was able to get it out that's the only real connection and the only thing that I think that I really feel is but I I've never considered that being part of an empath as much as it's just because I'm Dr. Doolittle I, I always my partners have always laughed they go you know people don't like you but animals do <laughs> oh ouch <laughs> there's so much more to you but just being an empath I mean I think that most people that are empaths have other gifts, don't you, Sheila? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And there are people who, um, I know a, a woman named Lady Christopher, and she is very empathic toward animals. That's her gift. Um, it's not so much toward people, but give that girl a horse or, mm. a, I guess, a pot belly pig, it too, but give that woman any animal and talk about calling an animal down fast. I mean, it's beautiful to watch her work. Um, but people, she doesn't do so well. She'd rather, she doesn't like to get into people's stuff. She hangs back. So... I need to for my dog. <laughs> hey, ladies, I have to... Um... I have to bring this to a close, at least the recording part, um, because we're over an hour now, and okay. and and I have had a fantastic wow. time, and 
time flies and each of you are fantastic. Thank you for gracing my stage. Thank so you. Can, for having can we us. say something about my book? Really? Thank you for having Oh, sure. Yeah, go ahead, Sheila. Okay, because we mentioned everybody else's, and I know it's because we had, theirs has something to do with this, but um, Memoirs of a Happy Lesbian Housewife, you can't make this, uh, this stuff up seriously, is out and doing well uh, by Lorraine Howell, and I just wanted to throw that in there. It's really fucking funny. So go pick it up. Oh, and it's fun. It's funny as hell. <laughs> it's funny as hell. Anyway, I'm going to close this out just for the recording part, and then we can continue talking if you guys want to. Thank you, Liz. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.